is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am Pride of YouTube.com for slash Smoke Gamer. This is Decked Out. We're talking about Hearthstone. Heroes of Warcraft. It's very early in the morning. I just woke up. It's very late for Shupsy. He's, he's trying to go to sleep. I don't know what Talto is doing. Just... It's, it's sunny out. <laughs> yeah. So, Hearthstone, we have not done an episode of Decked Out in a really, really long time. So I'm sure there's a lot of interesting stuff to uh, be discussed on today's episode. We are planning on bringing Decked Out back uh, to a more full-time sort of thing. So, uh, let's get let's, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. There's, like, there's some big news and blues going on right now over the past you know since we've been gone for a while so we got we got a little bit catching up to do on the news and blues so let's keep it let's keep it important and talk about giving the news the news and blues okay so my portion of it is they finally announced the hearthstone world championship something that they kind of alluded to over the past uh, month or so and what it's going to be is the top four players of each region, them being America, Europe, China, and then Korea and Taiwan are combined. Uh, I'll get more into the Korea-Taiwan thing in a little bit. But um, basically what it's going to be is the top uh, 16 legend players. So, like, you know, you get to rank uh, one, which is, or, like, zero, whichever one's the legendary rank. And then there's, like, different ranks of legendary. So the top 16 of those players will... Uh, play in a qualifier, and if you win, uh, you're the top four, you get to go to BlizzCon and play. <sighs> so, that's going to be fun. They're going to use that, kind of like what they did with the uh, Invitational Tournament with, um, like, Artosis and Trump and um, everything like that. So, but you're doing one of those at BlizzCon for Heroes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I could definitely see them doing that for, like, Blizzards, or, sorry, Heroes of the Storm. Well, they, they are doing it. Not, not oh. We can see them doing it. They are doing it. That makes that makes even more sense. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> like like all of us, I'm tired. So. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um. So one thing I find really funny about this is that Korea and Taiwan each only get two players, and honestly, I didn't know there were that many people in Taiwan that played Hearthstone to make them like, what is it? A, well, it's like an eighth of the the Hearthstone World Tournament population. Yeah. I mean, it's a fairly global. Theoretically, you could have players from Botswana. Like, it's not a thing that requires like a p for a random country. It's not a thing that requires like APM or a specific internet connection. It's like if you can play the amount of cards you need to win a turn, that's all you need. Um, what I like a lot about this is that they've got a lot of pre-tournaments and a lot of things to really determine who is getting in. A lot of people accuse the Innkeeper's Invitational of being a popularity contest, like, oh, you just got the most popular streamers and whoever. But this, they're going really all out and making sure we get the best players available for the World Tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that definitely should make it a, an interesting matchup, especially since there's an established kind of meta with Hearthstone now as opposed mm -hmm. to when the Innkeeper Invitational happened. Yeah, when uh, when was it? Crip played that kind of prototype of a hand lock deck. Everyone lost their shit. Now yeah. it's just yeah. <laughs> and, and Trump was like, no taunt ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, so I guess the next topic, Shipsy, you uh, you looked into this. Uh, yes. So the next topic goes hand in hand with the release for iPad, the Hearthstone release on iPad. So those of you who've been waiting for it, it's finally out. Um, get on that. Uh, so it's what they're calling the fireside gatherings. So they're trying to bring back, in a sense, the whole land party spirit. They want you to get a couple of friends together and play a couple of matches of Hearthstone. It can be as big or as small as you want, but the reward for it is the card backs. If you remember the card backs that were released a little while ago, this is one of them from that list. Um, and it's actually quite nice looking. If there's a picture, or if we'll link the picture below. Although, other than that, there's not too much with the fireside gatherings. This is just kind of their crowdsourcing promotion is to get is for you to get some friends together. Theoretically, you could do it on your own, but that really defeats the purpose. I uh, know. What do you guys think about the fireside gathering thing? Um, 
Well, number one, just want to clarify that there are no pictures. Uh, oh. And I didn't, I didn't prepare that much. Um, should have. But I didn't. So there's no pictures. <laughs> That's, I just want to clarify that, number one. The, I'm not going to lie, the fonts aren't even the same in our names in the overlay, okay? So... <laughs> They look similar, but to the train die, there's two different fonts in there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I actually like it, but I definitely see that it could be quite, a, it could be abused quite easily. I mean, I could go right now, I've got a laptop, I've got this desktop, and I've got the desktop I'm on right now. I could just as easily go create three different Battle.net accounts. I'm on the same network. Right? All I've got to do is play, like, this guy one time, this guy one time, this guy one time, you know, etc. But, plus, I've got an iPad, so I can, I can get four people. I can have four me's sitting in this room and get the, uh, the card backs. Just do it like Pride 1, Pride 2, Pride 3, Pride 4. <laughs> I, that's, that's about how much effort I'd put into it, too. But, uh... Yeah, I mean the the back is kind of cool looking. It looks like a like a pane. You you can go to the Hearthstone website and they have some stuff you can click to find it. But I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where like I guess they're trying to get people to be more social. But I don't think the game is like picked up enough that you can just expect people to like play it randomly in coffee shops. I guess that's the point of the iPad is yeah. that people will do that, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll probably play with my friends, um, and we'll all just like play on the same network connection, and we'll get it. But I, like, I think it's a cool concept. But the uh, oh, and it's like on April twenty sixth, so that's uh, Saturday. So yeah, got to make sure that I get my friends together before Saturday to play this. Uh, so that'll be in, in two two days of this release. We'll release the episode on Thursday. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, so we actually recorded an episode a week ago. Before it actually, or just before it actually released on the iPad. And we had this big discussion about uh, certain things that I, I see maybe have delayed the or maybe had delayed the release of this on the iPads and the iPhones and Android devices, etc. The mobile devices that they wanted to release this on. This is what they want to do. This is kind of their vision. They want it to be a game that you can just pick up, play a little bit of uh, while you're out and about, right? But sticking with Blizzard. It's just a Blizzard game that you can pick up and play no matter where you are. And Blizzard didn't really have that before. Now they have Hearthstone, which is fine and great, but that's totally ruined because the iPad version is pretty okay. It's, it's all right. It's, it's pretty good. But uh, I had I'd basically taken Hearthstone, had a video of me playing it on, on my touch screen, and then talking about, a little bit about some of the, the weird nuances of the game whenever you're playing it in a touch screen environment, and maybe that would have something to do I talked about possible correlations between the the bugs that happen when you're playing it on a touchscreen computer like desktop versus how those things might also affect an iPad version or an iPhone version, etc. All mute now, but at the same time, um, it was it was good, and uh, I think that it was it was pretty insightful in a lot of ways. But at the same time. Uh, I have to say that with Blizzard releasing it on the iPad, they did a damn good job, and they definitely fixed any possible uh, bugs and, and any possible annoyances that I found when I played the desktop version of Hearthstone on a touchscreen. So they fixed the iPad. They fixed the desktop bugs on the iPad. Like is that just certain things that I found while I was playing? Oh, okay, okay. on a touch screen as yeah, if like it the were a tablet. Issues, yeah. yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's good cuz like as you said, um that was one of the big concerns we had about how the, the bugs translate and 
what that does when you're actually moving things around in a real sense. Um, but again, apparently the delays were them really wanting to, everyone always talks about the Blizzard polish, it was them really wanting to polish it up for the iPad release. Because they really do want it to be this mobile game, you take it wherever you want. And the fireside gathering thing links into that. So I think definitely they've done a good job on pushing the mobile thing. Uh, Talthay, you said maybe the game's not as big as it can be, but I was reading, I wish I could find the link now, I was reading somewhere supposedly Hearthstone is the biggest app in the world for this, however they're doing the metric for the week or the month or whatever it is, mm. and that was within a day of its being of it being released. Yeah, I mean, I could see that easily, just I haven't, I guess like publicly, I haven't met that many people that have played mm. it, and I'm fairly open with my nerdy shenanigans and things, so... I would, uh, and since I also am in a technical discipline um, with other people, I'm just surprised that it hasn't become like. I guess I should have phrased that more to like it hasn't become like socially spoken of as much as uh, something like you know Magic the Gathering or World of Warcraft to be more specific yeah. to a Blizzard thing. So, but I mean that obviously World of Warcraft has been around a lot longer. So I was gonna say it's only been out for a week, so just give it some time and maybe <laughs> it'll 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 happen. Let's not all rush these. into this relationship, all right? This is not... <laughs> no, commit, commit! <laughs> so. Let's get it. Let's, let's, let's at least allow a little time for foreplay before we just get right to the... <laughs> to the thing. This happened last time, too. <laughs> we went straight to this analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hearthstone uh, is sex confirmed. So, yeah. I, the, the reason I brought that up and, and wanted to go into that a little more is because on the on on this episode in the top corner it does say Hearthstone on iPad and I was like well we don't really have anything to talk about now because it's already out so we'll just talk about the fact that we don't have anything to talk about because it's already out in a roundabout way how it's not fair that it's not out on Android tablets that's true I there you go I, there you I refuse go. to buy an iPad right it right no don't my phone um, is, a, is a droid and yep. uh I have, I do have an iPad. It's an older iPad, but I do have an iPad, and it does play on it and run on it and all that stuff. But uh. what's kind of funny is uh, I don't, to my knowledge, if an app goes on the uh, store for a tablet on Google, the Google Store, I believe you can play it on your phone. Yes. Which I know that with the iPhone and iPad, that's not the same thing. They're almost in, they're almost separate. So, you'll definitely get people being like, why doesn't Hearthstone work on my Galaxy S3? <laughs> but, well, uh... <laughs> personally, I just prefer the Android uh, OS versus oh. the hmm. iOS. But, uh... but Yeah, I mean, I, I have a Samsung S4 with a case on it, so... Um... So like I think it's big enough. I've downloaded it, I played it on the iPad, and uh, I mean, it, it works fine, it works fine. But I, I would definitely prefer it if I could play it on my Droid tablet or, you know, my Droid phone, so. No. Yeah. That's me on a personal level, though. I guess uh, at the end of the day, it's it's up to everyone's own individual preferences. Uh, is there anything else for news and blues this week? Is there, I guess I'm mm. trying to hit up on the important stuff. Yeah, not much uh, to talk about that's really actually, like, game-related. Apparently there was, like, a poster contest, but that's, yeah. like, that's like digging for straws at that point, or grasping <laughs> for straws. <laughs> yeah, I think you, uh... Well, never mind. All right, so Talthar, as you know, we're at the point of the show where we like to get out what we call the tip of the day. And uh, when we recorded last week, you had a very nice tip. By the way, the reason that this is delayed, it's supposed to come out last week, but for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. Technology is a funny, funny thing. It really is. Gremlins. You would think, <coughs> you would think that since Shubsy and Talthar's voices are coming from the same thing, right? They're coming from the same device in the mixer, right? Same device. There should be no difference in their volume level or anything like that. Coming into the same same port in the mixer. For whatever reason, Shupsy came through perfectly clear. Talthar couldn't hear a thing. 
It makes no sense to me. I don't know what happened. It was really frustrating because we had a really good episode. I really enjoyed it. We were all awake. Right now, none of us are awake. Like we're <laughs> we're literally doing this in our sleep. Like I'm still half asleep. I'm not a morning person. I hate the morning. If I'm awake before noon, it's a bad day. And it's going to be a bad day for everyone around me. I know this. Alright? I had to wake up at 9 o'clock this morning to do this show. And I fucking hate these two for it. And I will continue to hate them all day. I'm not going to talk to them for the rest of the day. Because fuck them. I had to get up at 9 o'clock in the morning. Alright, show's show. over. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's. I was... I did not sleep well either, so... But I just pumped up loud metal music into my ears and there you go. woke me up enough. There you go. I, I got to deal with a crying baby. So that's that was my morning. So it, it started off fucking fantastic for me. But anyways, this is what we do to bring you the entertainment. Let's talk a little bit about uh or anyways, actually let's get to the tip of the day. That's that's what we're on right now. Yeah. So uh, tip of the day is don't wake up at nine o'clock in the morning and do this show because you'll hate your friends. <laughs> Yeah, so the the tip that I gave last week was basically know the like appropriate power level of a card. So kind of like with arena and like there's other other card games that's similar because like in arena like there's cards that are very powerful in arena where in constructed play it's not so much as useful or you might think excuse me why is this card useful? You know, what what does it do for me and constructed play where and, and also I guess kind of know the uh, meta of the game you're playing because in arena you're gonna you don't have to like always expect that like a mage is gonna have flame strike and you don't have to you can kind of take more risks in arena and you don't have to be as afraid of someone having a card so basically know the meta and know how the cards play in the meta fair enough I think you said something about uh, being able to appropriate uh, uh, like the power, power of a card. Yeah. Yeah, so just, yeah, I mean, that was kind of with the, like, know the meta. Know where the card is its most effective and know where it's not. Like, so, like, Acidic Swamp Ooze is a good example. Um, if you're playing against, like, a mage or a shaman, well, maybe not a shaman, but, like, so, like, a mage um, is and a priest, they won't have weapons. Right. So you can throw it out turn two. But if you're playing against like a paladin or a warrior or anything that has a weapon, you probably should not throw out your acidic swamp ooze unless you desperately need a creature. So that's like an example of like in, in arena, I had like two of them in my recent arena. And, you know, I would throw, if I got one out, I'd be like, all right, I'll throw it down like turn three or something. But if I, some arenas I've only had one or zero. So, you know, obviously I didn't, throw it out as quickly as I could have. Right. I think that's um, actually you, a really good tip, honestly. Yeah. You're talking about, like, kind of keeping up the meta. The meta for Hearthstone, as we all know, is lightning quick. So, you can generally survive with a deck that's moving out of favor, unless you're at the very cutting edge of Legend. You can survive with a deck that's out of favor up until, you know, your rank 5 or so. So don't worry about having to be on every single bit of news from every single fan site, but keep ahead of things. Is would you say that's fair? I think yeah. I think if you're if you're playing at least two to three games every day, which is roughly an hour of time per day, or even if you're just playing an hour of time every couple of days, like the meta does evolve really quickly, but it doesn't evolve you know on an hourly or daily basis so much as it does you know every week. The meta sort of shifts, and then given you know four to six weeks, then the meta has evolved. But in in a one week period, it doesn't evolve so much. It's more of a shifting motion, I guess. To it changes slightly, but it's still your your method is still viable. It just needs to be tweaked a little bit to be in that new meta. But when you continue tweaking, it eventually becomes a whole another beast. So uh, definitely, just make sure. If, I mean, if we're doing. If I was to do my tip of the day, it would be if you want to play this at a, at a higher level, make sure you continue to play it. Uh, unlike me, which I will pick it up like once every two weeks and play for an entire day and then not pick it up for another two weeks. Yeah, but, uh, the kind of reason I brought up my tip there is because I was recently actually trying to get ahead of the meta again 
to play some ranked. And I was looking at all these like Warlock Zoo decks. I'm like, that's a thing? And just all this amazement. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Or you like... Play yeah. yeah, like Control Paladin kind of makes mm. me laugh when people do that. I'm like, no, it's aggro or nothing. Aggro Paladin. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's that's just kind of uh, the thing. I, I watch a lot of, like... Uh, a specific streamer, Trump, who was one of the people from the Hearthstone Invitational. I watch him play a lot, and it's kind of funny seeing, because he's played on EU and um, the US servers, and just watching him, like, play, not only Constructed, but Arena, and seeing, like, what people do, and the high-ranking uh, Constructed plays. Interesting, especially on, like, EU, where there, he said there wasn't as much of a defined meta towards what the United States was doing. So he actually had to think completely different than he did on the U.S. servers, which is honestly why I am I'm interested to see how that in this next tournament coming up for Hearthstone does because it's going to be international, right? And so I would love to see because we don't get to see what the Chinese are doing a lot of the time. We don't get to see what the Taiwanese are up to right now or the Koreans, right? So. I'm I'm so excited to be able to see like what they've come up with on their end of the deal, right? Like I'm excited to see what uh, how the meta between the U.S. and then Europe goes, right? The differences because there are differences. Uh, maybe not so much so big of differences between the U.S. and and the EU versus the the U.S. and Korea. Now that's probably a pretty major difference. But I'm I'm certainly excited to see how the how it plays up and who 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 are the better card players in the world, right? The Americans or the Taiwanese? <laughs> uh, poor Freedom. Australia, by the way, not even getting a spot. Like what the fuck? Uh, yeah, it was and not even nothing. They they gave what? it to Taiwan. I mean, like like what? To Taiwan. To be fair. They could have put us, the Kiwis, the Singaporeans, and the Philippines together. We get one person from each. That might have been fair, like Oceania yeah, or something. That, that's, yeah, there you go. While you're yeah. at it, while you're at it, then you could just throw it. Or they could add, you know, instead of doing that. I mean, they could they could also add Latin America. There's no Latin American uh, players coming in, right, to this tournament. I mean, there's so many different parts of the world. Why? I mean, I, I understand why they, they pick those particular parts. It's where it's the most popular, and they have, you know, the bigger fan bases. But still, nothing wrong with, yeah. that. Nothing wrong with our Kiwi brethren. In the uh, south, you know, upside it down. It says the Americas, for, in, so I don't know if that includes uh, Canada, Canada and it does like Mexico. It usually but. include Canada. Because when they say the Americas, they mean North and South America. Yeah. Mm. Even though we as Americans, you know, are the only ones who really are the only use ones it. Who, who, yeah, we're, we're like we're the Americans. You're Canadians. You're Mexicans. We're Americans. This is our fucking continent. God damn it. Yeah, I mean that's. It'll be interesting to see uh, how many of the players from uh, the Americas are like you know Canadian or. Look at like some random person from like Peru or Brazil. Look <laughs> <laughs> at like one Brazilian guy, and it'll just be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see the Brazilian. If it's anything like the Brazilians that play, you know, like <laughs> and whatnot, just like come out on the board and just start flaming immediately, and just start like <laughs> trash talking everyone, and he'll just, just well like spam. Well spam. Well yeah. well a natural well mistake. Whenever you play something, like it's the druid, a natural mistake, a natural mistake, and then when he wins, he'll be like, he'll <laughs> just be all intense, and he'll be like, oh my god, oh jeez. We'll be like, oh my god, this has turned into soccer. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll do like he'll do like a little dance after like da 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 and everyone will be like, no, don't let him win. Don't let him win. <laughs> or her. Uh yes. I like yes. how I like how you called it soccer, way to be American. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, we're football. We're, we're speaking to an international <laughs> wow. crowd, but god damn it, we will always call it soccer. We fuck America. your football. We have football. We know football. Bald eagles and <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> actually, actually, apparently, I got bored because I still say soccer, even though in Australia they're saying football a lot more often. I got bored and looked it up once. 
it's association football, right? So association soccer uh, is the way they slang things in England at the time. So soccer is football. So You're just hold on, using so a short term of it. The the short term for associated football is associate sock. Well, they just yeah. So if they if they continued that, would it then be like ass sock? <laughs> Associated yeah, no. soccer, ass sock. You need to talk to someone that was at Oxford University in the 1700s. Oxford? Oxford. Yeah, because Oxford <laughs> controls everything. <laughs> <laughs> they are the 0.01%. <laughs> so what you're saying is that originally it was called soccer? Is that... The, the sport itself is called association football, and mm-hmm. then association... The I can't remember if it's Cambridge or Oxford, one of the prestigious universities. The way they slang things there is to take part of a word and add er at the end, so it became sock er from association. Wow. Yeah. There is. So what you're saying is that the Americans are the smart ones who <laughs> graduated so from Oxford name, yeah. and or Cambridge <laughs> University. Uh. We're going to get all of the hate comments, <laughs> just like, America sucks. This is a fantastic episode. We're really talking about Hearthstone right now. I'm going I'm to take a lesson from the Co-Optional Podcast. Welcome to Decked Out, where we sometimes talk about Hearthstone. <laughs> well, it was the Reese's Pieces last time, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, true. it was. It was. It was the Reese's Pieces last time. I don't, I don't uh, know what I was doing on that. And anyways... <laughs> If I had the Reese's Pieces, I would do it again just because it was a good bit. I enjoyed it. But I already ate the Reese's Pieces. I, I, I overcame no, my I fear. <laughs> no, but seriously, I had a Reese's Pieces. It was like this thick and like this big, but it was a Reese's yeah, Pieces. Yeah, we, we can't see what Pride's doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and I are just like, this is big, this is big. <laughs> No, I still maintain that this Reese's Pieces is the size of the sun. I still have the, the clips. Like, you can't... I, like, I have that clip of me talking about the Reese's. Maybe one day. We'll, Maybe you should I'll just pull add that, that out of like the archive. The thing. There you go. Uh, anyways, last thing we need to talk about for uh, this episode of Decked Out is the adventure mode that was announced and is coming that... Ne- that uh, not Necroxis, but how it's a rather called... Like, a year and a half ago, when we first started Decked Out, it was, you know, uh, before BlizzCon and all that stuff, we were like, we gotta get Decked Out out there, we gotta start talking about this game, we gotta start talking about Hearthstone, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be so big, it's gonna be so huge, it didn't really reach those those levels, but that's okay. Yet, it hadn't reached them yet. Um, but, Howitzer said something about, I, I, he said, and I think it was basically word for word, Something along the lines of, they're going to one day release a single-player mode based off of the old TCG. Yeah, he said that uh, there was going to be like a raidish mode or yeah. something. Yeah, I think so, he even called that it would be Nex. Pretty sure he said at one point that it would be Nex. That he did. Or that they did. No. So, uh, yeah, sorry by the way if you hear that dog like crying in there. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but uh. There's a dog crying in there. He misses. Everyone's gone, and he's locked out of the room so that he can't mess with me while I do the show. And then he cries about it. So, uh, like pet me. pretty much. Uh, no, it, yeah. he can he can hear me talking, so he knows someone's here. So he's just making a scene. Anyways, uh, so how it's are called this whole thing happening, and and it is it's now happening. And what what so tell us exactly what's going on here. Um, um, with adventure mode. Okay, so I actually never played the original Naxxramas. I was not much of a raider when I did play uh, World of Warcraft. So basically, they're having it's like five wings. Uh, the first one you get to play for free, and the other four you get to play with. You either can unlock with in-game gold, or you can uh, buy them, like buy into them. And basically, it's you like play against some mini bosses, and then you get to play against like the big bads of some of the Naxxramas raids. Um, and like an example of one of the, it's like one of the mini bosses is like Hygen the Unclean. Um, his ability costs one mana. It's called Eruption, and it deals two damage to the leftmost enemy minion. 
So that's kind of an interesting ability. That is interesting. Very um, specific as to which enemy it's going to be. Yeah. Getting there. Dave, um. <laughs> well, kind of, if you played against the AI once you've gotten past those first couple of hours of gameplay, you, you realize that the AI is actually painfully dumb. So I like that they've made all the bosses gimmicky and you have to count them in certain ways. Yeah. Like they might be a boss that's using all these control cards, so you've got to <laughs> rush or something like that, which is really cool. Um,. And it actually mimics the WoW rating scene where you can't just smash against the boss with your face and he'll fall over. You've got to do the mechanics. So I really appreciate that. Um, they've got, is it like 40 cards coming out? Is it, uh, 30, right? 30 new cards. But 30 I think cards. That, yeah, I think there's like... I don't know if that's including um, the class-specific card for each card, but so that might be 39. But... Um, who knows? There, there will be one card for each class, at least. Mm. Yep. And there's, what, the five new legendaries that you get just from beating the wings. So mm -hmm. if your legendary uh, collection is quite small, that's a nice way to bump it up. You guys just work on through Naxxramas. They're looking quite fun, too. Baron Rivendair here is your minions trigger their death rattle twice. If, you're, if you play that with Can, it's nuts. Yeah, because... <laughs> Because the thing with this set is that there's a lot of like death rattle uh, synergy. Like there's a card that they have which is called Undertaker. Um, it's a one two for one, but it's whenever you summon a minion with death rattle, gains plus one plus one. Kind of similar to the Unbound Elemental for the Shaman, uh, which plays off of Overload. Well, I definitely like that, and I, like I talked about when we did this last time. Um... I like the idea of, of that because it, it teaches people to be sort of reactive in a way and, and sort of take what they do have and, and change that into something else, right? Uh, just by making some slight variations within your own deck, right? Like figuring out how you can defeat that. And I think that's going to improve a lot of people, improve and elevate a lot of people's games uh, having that sort of training not, i don't want to say training because not like a training mode but at the same time it, it you do get stuff out of it right like uh you you get to understand how certain cards counter certain cards right or certain card types or certain deck types ca counter other deck types and by making and transitioning just a few cards in your deck and shuffling them around a little bit you can have a completely new deck right that feels different and plays different even though you may have only replaced you know six or seven cards those six or seven cards are, are they can change everything they can change the way the game comes out and plays out for you and so I like that and I, I think that it will get people in the, the lower brackets of, of the game to kind of step up their game and hopefully you'll get better competition even in the lower rungs of the you know, ranked system, which I think is good. I think that's I think that's good. Yeah, and something that we mentioned last week when we did this it was actually Shopsy that did. But um, the new cards will be in arena uh, for the arena players, so you don't have to play through the Curse of Naxxramas if you don't want to. Um, which I think will be fun because I've been playing a lot of arena. There's also a new game board. That's like specific to Naxxramas and looks really cool. Uh, I can't wait to click on all the things. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, and then there's like so the the class I had to look it up again to make sure um, the class specific cards you actually get through class challenges, which are done through the adventure mode. But they're kind of like your they test your specific class, which I think that's really fun. Like seeing oh well how can a paladin <laughs> deal deal with this stuff versus like a priest or a rogue and they try to tailor it to make it as you know difficult to yeah. me as possible for your class so Dev I think that they definitely put a lot of time into it and I think they put a lot of thought into it and I think that it's going to end up being really fun to do and I think it's going to be a really good distraction from the, the normalcy of ranked and, and unranked play and arena play. I think it's something that's going to be thrown in there that's going to kind of spice it up a little bit, give you a little something extra to do. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's it's kind of like uh, I guess we could go into some theory crafting type stuff. But what what type of uh, like other raids could they bring back? Because like I'm an old fan of the horrible raid of Molten Core, so <laughs> I'd like to see that back. But they already have like Rag as a card, so they'd have to give you like some other one of the bosses from it. Ultimate Ragnaros. <laughs> you get like uh what was his sulfuron his hammer that could be like a yeah. weapon card yeah like like a legendary weapon card that people would be like well my class can't actually that'd be really cool if any class could use it because then like your mage would be like quip sulfuron and it's like wait what no this my this fire breaks... be purged <laughs> <laughs> breaks the meta <laughs> that's actually what they should do is whenever you wield it by fire be purged Right, yeah. Just scream that across the room, and then it'd be like, so, but it wouldn't. I don't think it should be like totally devastating, right? Like, because of that situation, you only get it for one turn. You have to use it in the turn after you you pull it, right? Mm -hmm. So you pull it out. You can't attack on that turn. You you have to attack on the next turn, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like that way, it's it's defeatable, but it does like ridiculous damage for that. So it'll do like like eight damage to the hero, or whatever. Like it'll do like eight. Like, I think that's pretty fair and balanced. So you're like, saying, that's pretty... like, it's uh, the first turn, it's like a 0, 1, and then the next turn, it's like an 8, 1 or something? Right. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. So, they could do they could do Blackwing Lair, they could do a lot of cool things. Um, they could do Ice Crown Citadel, but that's doubling up on the whole Death Rattle and Ice thing. And, sorry, I'm just going to take a second to say this, because I want to be right. You said Howie predicted Curse of Naxxramas. I'm going to try and predict the last legendary from, uh, what is, what's the final wing? Anyhow, the Saffron Kel'Thuzad wing. Not Saffron, not Kel'Thuzad, it's going to be Mr. Bigglesworth, and he's going to have a death rattle to summon Kel'Thuzad. Yep, the cat. <laughs> is that, is he really, that, 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 probably, that makes sense, that sounds like something yeah. the wizard would do. Duh. Yeah, actually. That wouldn't shock or surprise me at all. So we'll see. We'll see when it comes out. Do we know what the pricing is on that? Because I know that you, everyone gets the first wing for free, and then after that you have to pay for a key to, you know, unlock the next four wings. Um, it... Uh, I don't remember if they... I don't think they put a price on it, but I would assume it's going to be like $5 per wing, most likely. So by the end of it, you're going to be paying 20 bucks. Yeah. That's not bad. Oh, jeez. That is... Yeah, they don't... They just says real money or in-game gold. It doesn't give, like, a price on it. My, I hope... Uh, there we go. You guys are... I don't want you to full screen on me, Skype. There you go. Sorry, your pictures were way, way off. Touch screen, sometimes accidents happen. Oh, it appears, <laughs> appears my dog has moved into the uh, view of at least my webcam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually I actually saw that and turned my head because I thought it was my bed. I was like, what the fuck is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my... <laughs> he's just like, he's like, I want attention. I'm going to steal the spotlight. Fair enough. All right, so... um. Twenty bucks, then I think is is I think what four ninety nine per wing. Can you buy it with the in game gold that you get from Quest, or is it cash yeah. only? Yeah, it, yeah, so it says you can buy with in game. Nice. Yep. Perfect. Good. So you can start stockpiling now, guys. Yes. Uh, do we have a speculative release date for this at all? They um, haven't really said much since the original announcement about it, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to hear some news soon. But nah, nothing on release date. Yeah, they did. Oh, Maybe sorry, will, Shipsy. Maybe it will release no, no. around the time of BlizzCon, which is November the 7th and 8th. They did, uh, uh, a release date will be announced at a later time. They didn't even do the, like, coming soon trademark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blizzard. Just... <laughs> they should do that with, like, everything. Just be like, it'll come out tomorrow. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> soon, uh, as in tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's. I'm definitely excited for it. All it'll kind of break up the monotony of Hearthstone, and I think get a few people back in. Excuse me, and, and how we kind of talked about how it'll change the meta. I'm really interested to see how these legendaries will change it because, like, Baron Rivendare looks like he would improve the capabilities. 
excuse me, of like Sylvanas or Cairn or like the Leper Gnome. And just there's like also a few cards that it would be bad with, um, like the beast. The beast giving them two three threes would be kind of bad. Yeah. And there's a card called Dancing Sword that they released. It's a four four for three, but when it dies, your opponent draws a card. So that's kind of yeah, like that would suck to play with Baron Rivendera out. It's like your opponent gets two cards. Well, I mean for free. that just comes down to like you know you have to de- you as a player have to decide when you want to play that card, and, and as the opponent you have to you know make sure that you get rid of that card before you get rid of any death rattles that could potentially end you. So yeah, it's not unbeatable. It's it's workable. Huh. I mean, for example, uh, I play a deck that centers around uh, Antonitis on my mage deck, um, my spell deck, and a lot of people, I mean, a lot of the times I don't expect that I will have him out there for too long, because a lot of people will immediately start going after it, because it is very powerful. You're basically getting, you get, I mean, you get a fireball in your, your hand every time you play a spell, so if you lay down Antonitis, and you've already got, like, a couple of uh, spell cost-lowering cards... I mean, you're throwing out all sorts of spells just to get all those fireballs in your hand. You can throw two fireballs out at a time, yeah. and that's even without any, uh, you know, improvement, improving or plus ones to your spell power or anything like that. You're doing insane amount of damage every turn just on the two fireballs alone that you get. So, or that you can you can throw out there. Yeah, I played against a mage who actually drafted Antonitis, and I was like. You've got to be shitting me. This like, no. This is really powerful in arena. Like he, you know, it's it's seven. It costs seven, but he's still like, that's that just like it wrecked me. Like I couldn't do. It. The only reason I won is because I I had drafted rag. So right. I'm not even gonna lie. So. I've 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 gotten the coin and kept that coin the the entire game, just waiting for Antonitis to come out because that's an extra fireball. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it did happen, and I got him out, and I I mean, I had uh, like. I had uh, minus two spell cost cards on the, yeah. on the field whenever I played Antonitis. So I got like four spells out. So I had four fireballs in my hand. I mean, it was intense at that point. It was it was ridiculous. And by yeah, that time, like, with all those spells that I'd had and used, like he didn't have anything on the board. So he was done. I mean, it was it was as soon as it came out, it was over. It's very, very powerful. Um... But it, that's what that's what I'm getting at. It's, it's up to the player to decide when it when's the appropriate time to play it, and it's up to the opponent to determine, you know, when's the proper time to kill it, right? Like, can I leave it yeah. there for a turn, or do I need to get rid of it now? And and can I get rid of it now, or do I have to wait another turn? And what can I do to protect myself this turn so that I don't I take the the least amount of damage possible, right? So that's uh you know you just gotta believe in the hearth of the cards. Right, you just that, yeah. the hearth of the cards. <laughs> uh, anyways, oh, anyways, uh, now that the bad pun of the day is is out, we've gotten that that part of the show out of the way. Um, I don't think we got really have anything else. Uh, we uh, pretty much covered everything we wanted to cover today. I will say that uh, you should get used to Shopsy's face. He. Uh, more than likely will be the new hosts, one of the new hosts of Decked Out, so get used to it. Enjoy it. Relish. Relish. <laughs> Leave angry comments down below. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta listen to this Australian jackass every time. I can't understand this bloody topic. <laughs> Dalthar was bad enough, now you're bringing it more. <laughs> Indeed. Alright guys, that's going to do it for us here today on Decked Out. Thank you all for tuning in and watching our shenanigans. Our very tired shenanigans this evening. So, Thank you guys and we'll see you all next week.